he's been going through it. And when you read through it, um, it, it's not so much a roadmap to peace as opposed to a wish list of less than concrete suggestions or ideas. Michael, you absolutely nailed it. On this one-year anniversary of the Ukraine war, China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs released this, this position paper on a political settlement for the crisis in Ukraine. And in it, it calls for an end to all hostilities. It calls for an end to unilateral sanctions. It also calls for the resumption of peace talks, with China, quote, playing a constructive role. Um, but it didn't offer any concrete details. And we did hear a response from the head of the EU delegation in China, said that this position paper is just that, a paper. It's not a peace proposal. But we also heard from Ukraine's charge d'affaires in China, who said that this position paper is, quote, a good sign. But the charge d'affaires of Ukraine also urged China to do, quote, everything to end the war. Now, earlier, we heard from a senior U.S. State Department official said that any peace plan for Ukraine, it must be lasting and it must be just. I want you to listen to this. A week ago or so, What's most important is that any peace be a just peace and a durable peace. It can't simply be a cynical ceasefire that allows the Russians the time to go home, rest, refit, and return, as we saw. Um, so that's why the Ukrainians themselves have put out a 10-point peace plan, which focuses on their full sovereignty, their full territorial integrity. But listen, if, if uh, Xi Jinping can get Putin and his army uh, out of Ukraine, I think we'd all applaud and, and, and give a peace prize. Uh, this comes as the U.S. State Department and the Pentagon continue to warn China of consequences if it provides lethal support to Russia. China continues to fire back against that allegation. According to the latest MOFA briefing, I want to show this to you. This is what we heard from the spokesman. Quote, we can easily imagine that the intelligence of the U.S. referred to is most likely chasing shadows and smearing China. Since the outbreak of the Ukraine crisis, China has firmly stood on the side of dialogue and peace, unquote. Uh, Michael, we are awaiting details about a concrete Chinese peace plan. But of course, we're awaiting Russia's reaction to all this. As Newland pointed out herself, the fundamental question is, does Vladimir Putin want peace? Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Christy, thank you so much. Christy Lou Stout there.